When seen from the perspective of satellites, the islands of Halong Bay off Vietnam's north coast were forged over hundreds of millions of years by well understood geological processes. But according to local legend, they were created by dragons. Under assault by aggressive invaders, the indigenous people called upon the great mother dragon and her children to come down from the sky and protect them. Their call was answered and the enemy defeated. Then the dragons decided to stay and guard the people from future invaders. They made the islands as a barrier to prevent any further attacks. This is why the Vietnamese call Halong Bay the place where dragons come down. Just a few hours on the bay will leave you favoring the creation myth. But to see its full splendor, at least three days is needed. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is considered one of the natural wonders of the world. Short tours don't venture far offshore. You'll see locals fishing and maybe some cargo boats, but mostly you'll see cruise ships carrying tourists. Few people actually live on water close to the mainland. And of course, you'll see stunning scenery. Kayaking for an hour or two around a few islands is a great way to see them close up. If you have time, be sure to spend a tranquil night being rocked to sleep by the bay's gentle turquoise waves. Day two is the highlight of a three-day cruise. Boats take about 10 hours to reach the most populated of the islands, Katba. Sailing south, the locals begin to outnumber the tourists and you soon realize that the whole area is one giant floating economy. Fishing, trawling, and trapping are the main livelihoods. Life was similar for the earliest settlers. Beginning around 5,000 years ago, some of these islands already had small populations. By building boats and making simple fishing nets, they were able to produce surplus food, and so trade routes developed and this attracted more settlers. As elsewhere in the world, indigenous knowledge was the key to successful colonization of the bay. These settlers were actually too successful. Today, the area is too populated for its long-term sustainability, and the Vietnamese government has begun repopulating people to the mainland. As you sail closer, what looks like the house of a hermit, you'll see the same kind of activity that keeps any microeconomy afloat. Each floating house is a combination of restaurant, hardware store, and fueling station. They are mostly the permanent homes of those who run these support industries. A few even offer rooms for the night. Ask your crew to call into one of these places for a maritime stopover of an hour or so, even if they don't need to. It's a good way to break up the journey and a great opportunity to observe the comings and goings of the local economy. By late afternoon, you are just a few kilometers from Katwa Island. But there is one more surprise in store before you regain your land legs. There are a few floating villages in this area, but the one you'll sail through is the largest. In fact, it must be one of the largest floating villages in the world. You won't only see floating houses here. The village is a community in every sense of the word. Floating supermarkets are everywhere, as well as many other kinds of shops and restaurants. In short, everything a community needs for day-to-day -day living. 
chances are you've never seen a place quite like it. Once on Katba Island, pay close attention. You'll see how much of the island's commerce takes place on the water. Try to get accommodation on a high floor with a view facing west over the bay. That is as good a location as any to get your iconic Vietnam sunset photo.